Hey, this is John Reed. I'm at the SAP Controlling Show, Controlling 2019. I'm joined by Kent Bettesworth. We just had an, a very interesting discussion about the impact of RPA on auditors of all people. You might not think they're interested in RPA, but Kent says you better be. Absolutely. <laughs> and now we're going to move into some discussion of revenue recognition. So if you missed the RPA discussion, I'll release that separate. The revenue recognition issue is one that you've been out in front of for a while. Yes, 10 years. How would you describe why this matters and where we're at now? It's the only stand first. It's the only standard um, for the U.S. and internationally where everyone's reporting under the same rules. Mm. So that's that's great news. Um, you know, the, the the goal was to converge on a lot of things. Revenue got there. So when an investor looks at a company's uh, financials and looks at the revenue line, they should feel a lot of comfort that that revenue number is accounted for in the same way every company needs to account for, no matter where they're at, no matter which country. So that's number one. I think that's the fundamental part, again, that puts a, uh, is a significant underpinning to our whole capitalist system of investing. Now, the... What's actually happening is, and I pulled a bunch of headlines just yesterday about revenue recognition, and I'll, I'll just rattle off a couple of them because we're not there yet, right? So, for example, SEC questions Starbucks about revenue recognition policy. So there's some issues in the actual execution. Mm-hmm. We know what the rules are, but what about the execution? Uh, uh, here's another company that uh, actually reported uh, revenues were up 11% after they implemented the new standard. And here's another company whose revenues are down after. So, you know, the the key here is is really making certain that all investors truly understand what the revenue recognition standard was about. And then the, the, the other point about this is, um, is if you're moving from one ERP system to the most next most modern one, uh, what can you do to improve the actual execution of that revenue process within your system? So that gets you into talking about the actual solutions that SEP is offering around around revenue recognition. Right. So tell me, just in terms of this show, uh, we have uh, more than 100 SAP controllers here who are obviously tasked with dealing with this in some capacity at their companies if they're dealing with these kinds of reporting issues, what do you see in this year? What, what's the temperature in the room? What kinds of questions are they asking? Where are we? Yeah, so, so it's mainly good news in that the, the public companies that implemented um, and went with RAR uh, are live. And, which is SAP's Which solution. is SAP's yeah, yeah. solution. Thank you, John. Revenue and reporting, yeah. RAR. Um, and... Uh, like most software projects, dealing with a uh, immature product, meaning it's new relative to all the other products, uh, there have been issues, but none of them showstoppers. Uh, they've uh, the company internal resources, both IT and, and business, have adapted, uh, maybe painfully in some cases. Um, and SEP has put all the resources they've needed to behind the product to make it work. And uh, so to everybody's credit, uh, they knew top line how important getting revenue right was. Uh, like most projects, there were things they didn't know that they didn't know, uh, but they reacted well and, and solved them. So the good news is the product works. And the second part of this is it's continuing to be improved. So for private companies who haven't had to implement it yet, so they're Implementation date has been pushed out another year. FASB realized that just from a process, forget the solutions, the process was difficult. A lot of the conversations Mm -hmm. among the entire company on how to implement this, um, that with the public company struggling to get it in, even though they did manage, the private ones don't have the same level of resources. So they needed more time, not-for-profits and some of the smaller reporting companies. So those guys got another year. They don't need to... uh, uh, implement it uh, right away. Uh, so that gives them some time to evaluate what the uh, right approach is and what the right solution is. So I think it's all, so I think it's good news. I think 
the FASB and ISB have reacted appropriately to what they observed, which might not have been the case in the past. Like I haven't coughed like this whole week, and now suddenly. <laughs> and and in terms of your project work, have you been exposed to this on projects as well? Yes. So um, you know, I've seen a couple of cases where, uh, and this is true, every project's different, right? So in some cases, the the companies relied on outside consulting to drive the project and bring the technical expertise because. Quite frankly, this RAR product was very new two years ago, um, and I, so IT didn't have the resources, which is typical. Uh, in some cases, there, it was actually, in, in the cases I'm familiar with, it was driven primarily by finance, which is actually the right answer, because this impacts finance primarily, and they're the ones that have to account for the revenue and report it. And so I think what I've seen on the actual execution of the projects is is that companies have brought to bear the right resources. And when they uh, stumble because they hit that piece that they didn't know they didn't know, mm. they brought the resources in that they needed to fix it because they knew how important it was. So big picture, it's a good story, and I think companies are adapting correctly. I will say that if you back up three years before the actual, maybe a year and a half out before the implementation date, I have to say, as I was consulting with another uh, a number of companies about this solution and what did the revenue rec uh, standard actually mean, the comment from a lot of people was, oh, they'll either push it out a few more years or uh, it'll go away, you know, Congress will intervene and it'll be different. And so having followed this for 10 years, my answer to those statements was not this time. Yeah. This is real. It's coming, and in fact, that's exactly what happened. Nobody pushed back on the implementation for the public companies. They did change course for the private companies and gave them another year. Now, with RAR, is that uh, backwards compatible uh, into SAP ERP releases? Like, how far back do we go? So you need to be on ECC 6. You need to be on Enhancement mm -hmm. Pack 7. Okay. Right? And here's but you don't have to be on S4. You do not have to be on S4. I'll, let's talk about that in just a second. Uh, ECC 6 Enhancement Pack 7 is the minimum. And more importantly, or as importantly, your SD module needs to be on a current support pack, and the number escapes me. But I think that was a surprise to, to a lot of folks who are implementing, is that, oh, it is tied into SD in the ECC environment. Uh, so you had to, and so a lot of companies who had been rocking along for years using SD to calculate deferred revenue, which is really what we're talking about. You're just talking about changing the timing of revenue that you recognize on the income statement. They used SD and everything was working fine. Now comes along RAR because they now need to change the timing on the revenue, either push it out further or bring it up forward. And RAR handles that process. Uh, but it needs input from SD, for example, goods delivered and the like. And so your SD all of a sudden was, ex uh, RAR was expecting information from SD that if you were on the latest SD support packet failed. Now, let's talk about S4. Here we go. So in S4, the revenue recognition from SD uh, is not there, which means if you stayed on SD RevRec and for whatever reason did not implement RAR, when you go to S4, premise, cloud, you need to implement RAR. There's one caveat. And this I think everyone will understand. We're talking about timing of revenue and um, deferring revenue. So if you're a strict ship and bill company, this doesn't impact you. And if you're doing that with SD, you're fine. You don't need RAR. But if you have complicated contracts that have a number of uh, requirements where you're bundling services, uh, whether it's simple explanation, cell phone, and then the service that you get with it, the right. cell phone gets recognized up front, the service gets recognized over time, you don't pay an upfront fee. You just pay over time. So companies, per the revenue recognition standards, have to allocate 
that total contract price, a piece of it back to the cell phone and book it then. And if you want business model flexibility going forward, then you're going to have to reckon with this sooner or later. So Exactly. Exactly. So the good news is if you're a public company, um, you had a one-year period where you had to report both the old way under 605 uh, standard and the new way under 606, so you don't have to do that anymore. So it's the burden is lightened because that dual reporting was pretty significant. Um, so my advice on companies that are looking at going to S4, um, you're looking at all your processes. When you look at the revenue piece, you really need to ask yourself, Do I need? am I a company that actually needs to implement RAR before I go to S4? Because it's a significant exercise or... I at least need to do an evaluation to see if it is a significant exercise that I don't want to burden my S4 project with. <laughs> well, you know, S4 is moving into what we call uh, predictive controlling as one of the aspects that, that they're pushing ahead with on the cutting edge. You, you might say that Janet was talking about from SAP. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb and predict that you're going to get a lot of business next few years <laughs> in RER. So that's my predictive <laughs> piece here. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're very astute, John. Yeah, because <laughs> I can see a lot of people saying, wait, I'm going to S4, and I, I need some help figuring out how this all works. So, I mean, it sounds like it's doable, but it sounds like advisory is going to be needed to figure this out. I think advisory is, and, I, and, and I'm not sure that that's any different than in the, in the past. Yeah. But uh, I'm just saying there's going to be a groundswell because if people are moving and stuff. So. There's a lot of, of, yeah. of uh, questions about that. We know there's few R S4 resources and the like. So I think you're right. That's that could happen. But I think it's still at the end of the day, it's every company has to look at this. The question is when are they going to look at it? Uh, are they a legacy ECC system? Or are they yes. Greenfield? All, all those other kinds of issues come into play. But I would not disagree with you yeah. that there's certainly a lot of advisory. And let me give you one antidote. So I was talking to one of the attendees uh, today and their comment to me about revenue recognition and S4 was like, we've had five different consultants come in and talk to us about this, and they all told us something different. <laughs> and so, so there's a there's an unclear message about this. Yeah. And uh, at a higher level, it's not probably not just RAR, but there's a lot of questions by companies in general as to okay, what's really required, and and what. Do I not have to do? What do I have to do? And I will say that the other presentation I sat in today here at the conference um, was by an SCP employee who explained all the tools that are available to evaluate from the transformation, the uh, SCP star release. I got that wrong. It's called something else. Yeah. There's five or six tools to help you evaluate what it would take. And it looks to me at first blush that those are all great ways to try to get down to um, what is required. But your company still has to have a strategic reason. And I think that's the piece a lot of companies are struggling with yeah. beyond. You got to get past the that the standard execution and the, the technical what's and why's. You still have to know strategically why are you doing yeah, and I would even argue that there's a bigger question your company's leadership has to tackle, which is first they have to get on the same page with where they're heading as a business, but they have to take a position on digital transformation in their industry, and they have to also take a position on the role of SAP systems within that transformation. And then from there, when, when they figure out the role of the data in their business and how that's going to inform all of that, and yep. they have a plan for data strategy – then and only then, I think they can start thinking about this from an SAP standpoint and, and how to move forward and whether it makes sense to move yep. forward to S4. And I think the, the challenge that folks at this conference face as SAP controllers is they're not privy to a lot of those strategic decisions. Correct. So they sometimes have input, but right. they're not the ones making those decisions for the right. most part. Right. There's a couple CFO types here, but m mostly it's it's finance leads. Yep. So... They're in a tough position here, I think, because they're they need to figure that out on the terms they can. And what I will say is, there's a ton of interest. Like yeah. the business case session you and I were in, that was full. Yeah. Uh, of course, all the S4 Hana transitional um, pieces that the Janet does on 
that right. everyone's engaged, they're yep. interested, they know yep. it's coming. Yep. But I just don't talk to very many that seem to be in a good place as far as here's what our company's doing, here's my role, here's how we're transforming our business. Right. You know, actually the one person here that does have that is our keynoter Barb, Barb at Discovery. Yes. Like she was able to clearly articulate what Discovery is doing from a business model standpoint, how S, how S, SAP fits into that and all that other stuff and, and how the cloud migrations that they're doing fit into that. But interestingly enough, they're not an S4 yet either. Correct. And so after all of that, <laughs> she, but 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 they, at least they understand some of that. And the reason they're not on S4 comes down to the fact that they've been going through a bunch of mergers and acquisitions. And so they had to make some decisions around right. the pace of that. Right. But at least it seems like they kind of take all that into account. Yep. But she's the only one I can think of at the whole show that I've talked to that, that really has that all figured out yet. Yeah, so. I think you're right. And, and, and I'll put uh, in some comments about this particular conference, as you said at the beginning, I've been coming here a lot of years. And I thought that this year in particular had a really great group of speakers talking about things that the folks that are here can get their arms around and understand and help yeah. them start to be able to articulate within their organization and maybe have those communications with the higher level managers about, hey, I learned this at the Controlling 2019 conference. So, you know, it sounds like this affects us or, you know, what are we doing here? So it helps that conversation, which I know SCP is trying to get that conversation right. crystallized for people to have a reason for um, improving. I, for me, it comes down to, it's it, this has been true for all the years uh, that I've been working with companies, is if you're standing still, you're falling behind. Yeah. Right? So you have to keep moving forward, uh, and you have to keep moving forward at a pace to at least keep up with everybody else, if not get ahead of them. Uh, and sometimes that might mean taking a different direction. Um, but man, if I were, if I were a betting guy, I'd probably put a lot of bets on SAP that they'll figure it out and that they'll help companies who have pretty massive investments in their infrastructure around the SAP world to, to continue to do that. One other thing, I was at the, uh, Best Practices Oil and Gas Conference in Houston, and I saw that a number of companies have placed their bets. You know, the, the big oil and gas guys mm. have said, S4, we're going. Uh, were they going whole hog? No. Were they doing it big, big uh, uh, implementation? No. But they said, that's our future. That's where we're headed. Other companies were saying, we're going to put our foot in the water, but we're not there yet. Yeah. So, Hey, as long as you have a plan, I think that's progress. Even if it's a slower plan, at least you know yeah. what you're doing. I've always said you got to do this on your own terms. And yeah. and I do think the the folks here are very engaged in trying to figure out how to do that, which is really encouraging to see. This is a great so, conference. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's uh, definitely a labor of both love and, and business for those of us that do it. And it's great to have folks like you every every year to make it happen. Yep. So thank thanks, you Ken. for inviting me, John. Yeah. Glad you're a guiding light for this conference. It's fun, man. All right. Talk to you later. Yep. Thanks.